All right. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning. Good evening. Wherever this day might find you. Hopefully it finds you well. Hopefully you're doing well. Good to see you, Paul Loren, uh, Lozano, uh, Afroja, top fan, and Breen as well. Hamza, everyone, welcome. Paul Tran here, going to dive into this, creating some fun uh, sort of stylized landscape. We're basically taking this whole idea, this flat design, and uh, how you can execute on it. So uh, that's the plan, broadcasting from beautiful uh, Denver, Colorado. Um, where we had a crazy hailstorm last night at like 2 a.m. So, yeah, it was pretty nuts. But uh, hopefully the weather finds you well. Always uh, looking forward to seeing where you're from as well. From Italy, awesome, Chiara. Cool. Well, let's dive into this. I don't want to waste your time. I think this is fun. I'm very excited. Bo, good to have you here. I'm going to shift screens and uh, dive into this right now, my friends. Oop, here we are. All right, fantastic. And let me know if you have any questions because I'm here to help you. Um, ultimately, uh, this is kind of what I'm, I'm, I'm making or what I'm going to build, something like this, as you can see. Um, boom. Should be Shift F, right? There we go. Shift F. Just so you know, that's a new shortcut uh, in the latest version of Illustrator. If you hit Shift F, that's presentation mode um, and allows you to kind of show off work. So um what's up james hill from los angeles good to have you here uh as far away as morocco as well so and how can you take this scene and go from a uh, night today which i thought was uh really exciting to do okay so we'll kind of we'll dive into this and i'm gonna get this party started right now again just so you know that shortcut right here let's just go right down here view presentation mode and that's why you're joining me here today because that shortcut is shift f even though it doesn't show um the shortcut right there uh, that's what you need to do right cool all right let's kind of kick this off let's get this started i kind of already kind of have drawn some basic shapes and uh, typically what i do is i let's throw some colors in here Let's get some color going on, huh? Shall we? Let's go nighttime. Let's do that. Ah, and I'm going to get started right now. Alessio from Tuscany. As always, as I'm jealous of you. Oh, Norway in the house as well. Uh, just so you know what I typically do, and I, I've shown this before, but... Uh, I, I created this like Uber file that I always use because notice how I clicked on this gradient. You're not going to have all these like really cool swatches and such, right? Right over here. Um, I built an Uber file uh, that allows me to jump in and I don't have to make these gradients like multiple times. I just jump in, I click on it and I'm good to go. Okay, so I encourage you to do that. It actually goes in this new document profiles folder okay so that's the first pro second pro tip i'm showing you today uh, but let's dive into that so that's how i've where i've gotten that gradient uh, we can see some other shapes here that i could actually draw really fast but typically how i'll do this is i'll, I'll use a circle okay so again all this is going to be made with basic shapes you know an ellipse Zoop. draw that out because i want that to have a nice curve like that I'll hit the plus key, I'll add maybe a point there. Maybe I'll remove this point by hitting the minus key. Boom, get rid of that. And guess what, Shift C brings up this anchor point tool as we see right over here, okay? So that's what I'll typically do. Maybe click on that one, make that sharp. Boop, A key. You'll get into these shortcuts. I'm sure you probably, some of you already have, but here I'm just creating uh, some of these rolling hills now. I'm going to get this started. I'm going to get this done actually in 22 minutes. So again, this is sort of pro design within 22 minutes. And that's why I'm using shortcuts because I don't have a lot of time. Zoop, curve that out. What do we do? We're going to use those same gradients. There we are. Swatches there take that and take that okay let's start drawing some things as well i'm manipulating these gradients like that again we have these rolling hills now that's pretty straightforward okay you got it like that uh i want to kind of knock out a tree really fast and anwar you were not late you were right on time my friend 
because all we're doing is we're creating some flat design, right? Some a flat sort of landscape, if you will. Okay, but also getting pretty unique with it as well. All right, so right in here, what do I want to do with this? Well, I'm going to add a gradient. Not only a gradient that's going to be from white to transparent, like I'm doing here. So again, we can go white to black, but I'm going to change that to transparent. And it's good even if you're going uh, with a 0% opacity, it's still going to pick up a tint of that color. So if I throw yellow in there, notice how it's going from yellow to white. Even when I take this down to zero, you're still going to get a hint of that yellow. You probably have realized this. You pros out there. Jesse Jupp, what's up? Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry you can't watch this on the iPad. I'm not sure what the situation is there. That is uh, a... Um, a Facebook thing and I'm sorry to hear that so you see an egg that that's cool too there's my nice little moon we'll make a night scene right there we have that nice little gradient maybe we'll throw an effect in here right we'll stylize this and we'll go with outer glow okay so again we're still going with that flat style it's just a simple circle with a gradient that is now going to transparency and then let's turn on preview because i'm going to make this a blur of about 80 80 pixels okay typically it's set to like two it's not that good right in fact anytime you like start layering on these effects it'll get rid of your transparency right because it's like adding that uh, glow on top of that object that's why i'm going to change this up to like 90 or something or 70 adding that and that looks much better now we have our glowing moon it's glowing all right all right arman uh glad you like this i need to get this started i need to get moving because i'm going to draw some trees really fast same situation boom ellipse tool l for ellipse let's go ahead and change the highlight color right in here and let me know how you're doing. How is everyone? Is everybody having a beautiful day? I hope so. I am. Oop. Let's just draw. We will draw a couple of these, not to worry. Uh, I'll maybe change this gradient. Maybe go top to bottom. Now, here's a key thing. Okay, so Armand, just because this is flat design doesn't mean that it's simple, right? This is going to get somewhat, could get a little complex, right? Because you just kind of need to understand how, how to draw, right? Uh, again, I'll jump in here. I'll add a trunk really fast and create this tree. Let's drop in rectangle like that. Let's make this a little larger. Take these two shapes. In my properties panel, anytime I have two shapes selected, it gives me those appropriate uh, um, options for them. So it's going to be center. So center align them. Let's grab these points. Boop. Bring them in a little bit. Just like that. We're making our tree take these two shapes same thing these two shapes are selected yes i can align them again properties panel gives me everything i need right over here we're going to go ahead and uh join them or unite them like that boom there we are and now i can continue to work on this a little bit more um this probably needs to be a little bit darker the gradient is something i'm going to play with a lot okay but let's add a couple more circles to this to make our tree there there shortcut key sending that behind kind of making something like that for our our tree right pretty pretty straightforward let's let's see if i can make this look cooler ah i want to play with the colors some more but um I digress. I do want to keep in mind the lighting, okay? Check this out, uh, Jermaine. Um, oh, I, I will use my inside voice since you're going to sleep. Since I established this light source, I need to make sure everything is influenced by that light source. So right over here, for this part of this tree, I want to make sure that, of course, that the gradient is going to be a little bit brighter on that side, like that. Okay, same thing for this one right over here. It might be a little bit darker or even kind of maybe get some bounce light there. Something kind of like that. Okay, that's all I'm doing. I'll select these three shapes, excuse me, these four shapes, taking all of them using Pathfinder. Again, I don't have to open up that panel 
Philippe, how are you doing? Good to have you here today. Hopefully the day is treating you great and you're having a good hair day, right? Bringing this over. This is what I do, and I'm interested. You might do some shortcuts as well. Buyan, good to have you here. Um, is I usually have some of these reflect and rotation tools up right here, and then all I do is I double click on it. When I double click on it, it brings up, you know, flint it, flipping vertically or horizontally. Uh, so that's typically what I'll do. I'll just double click on it and then click OK. So double click, click OK, and it flips it. Right, you might have a shortcut already established. Right in here, we'll bring that down. What do we want to do next? We want to, you guessed it, shear it. Because we're going to take a cue from that light. We'll kick, click right up here and we'll stretch that out kind of like that direction, like so. Okay, we'll make this a touch smaller so it matches up. Keeping in mind our light source, right? Same thing for this. What do we do? We want to blur it out. In fact, what I might do is add, I'm going to make this a solid color. Hopefully I'm not going too fast for everyone, but let's make this a solid color. Let's give it some opacity. Ooh, even better, understanding light. Oh, it could use some branches, Anwar. Uh, that's a good point. Like how complex do you want to get with this simple design, right? And it's all about taking an element and deducing it to its, it's like, making it as simple as possible and no simpler, right? It's about what we can remove from these elements and still have them recognizable as a tree in this instance. Uh, but I like the idea of adding some branches. I think that's good. <sighs> Change my mind on this. Yes, I'm gonna give it a gradient. And you know what? I'm gonna take this gradient and we are gonna make it transparent. There we go zoop like that so we know since the light's coming from up here the upper left uh it's always going to be stronger down here at the base of the tree and then it's going to trickle out just like that uh, another thing that's going to happen is it's going to be blurry so that's why i'm going to jump in here i'm going to go to blur and add a gaussian blur let's preview that gives it that nice blur kind of like that and there we go uh, let's make this whole thing a little more transparent maybe all right, so far so good. Let's move along, because guess what? Since I have this done, I can duplicate this and have some fun with it. Group it together. Shift, Alt key, drag. Oops, did I not get them all? Group them. Shift, Alt, drag. Double click. This time I want to flip vertically, because I want to be mindful of this light source. Sun's in the center, or excuse me, the moon's in the center. This is going to be further away since it's on this mountainside. I'll position it like that. We'll make this one even further away like that. Zoop, shrink it down, kind of like that, okay? So this is kind of the what I'm looking for in terms of this style. <sighs> All right. Oh, Giovanna, thank you. I think it's looking pretty cool. And again, we want this to look cool. We want it to be simple as well, okay? Um, another thing I might think about doing is like changing the color as well. Somebody mentioned that. I want to make sure I'm, uh, you know, keeping being mindful of all the comments. Jermay, uh, how can you you change the color at the same time for the trees? This is typically what I will do. Um, and maybe I'm going to do this really fast. I'm going to add this background, okay? And this stuff I've just drawn already. You don't need to. It's all really pretty straightforward. I don't want to skip content, but I want to get more content in here and show you how you can change these colors. And then I'm going to add more to it as well. Okay, so gradients, boom. There they are. Wait for it. Wait for it. This is going to be a nice ridge back there. This is going to be a gradient zoop, like that. Right, that's all I'm doing. Shortcut for gradient is just G. We're going to give this some nice depth, OK? Selecting that, hit G, nice depth. The further back this is, see this one right here? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it a solid color, and I'm going to adjust the transparency. Because I want to change this globally, so it's going to be less about applying all these colors and making some of them just transparent like this. It should kind of melt into the background, that back ridge. Even this one could actually melt into the background a little bit as well. Okay. Let's add one more right here. 
It's mainly this back ridge that I made transparent. Okay, cool. Let's change some of these colors now because this is where it gets fun. Selecting everything, um, including the background. Um, I will save this as well. Save this as maybe version five now. Ooh, that's a great idea, Jermaine. You should make an After Effects file after this. I love the idea of doing a parallax effect. Ah, oh, I love parallax. So nice, such a good idea. Um, hello, Titus from South Africa. Good to have you here. So again, if we wanted to make this look daytime or just change the color in general, all I've used is maybe three colors in here, okay? Uh, with everything selected, I'll go to edit edit colors, and then I'll recolor artwork. Okay, and this is where we just get to do some exploring, right? So right in here, go to edit, lock this down. We'll change this from a blue to a teal, right? Just like that. You might not be crazy about this green that it's picking up, or maybe you wanna change uh, some of these other colors a little bit more. Uh, that's where you wanna unlock it right here. Now I can change this to be maybe more green on that side and adjust accordingly. Uh, let me zoom back out. Let's get some nice colors going here, huh? shall we? Shall we, folks? Oh yeah, I like this too. Ah, oh. see, that's looking pretty good. And keep in mind, I can change the colors individually as well. Right in here, selecting this. Hmm. What color should this be? There we go. Making it a little dark, but those are supposed to be trees in the background. That's why I did that. All right. Yeah, it's the beauty of the gradient slider. Exactly. So this is fantastic. Again, being able to jump in, uh, manipulate these colors. I personally think this needs m more color variation as well. Okay, so that's something I would probably work on taking a closer look at this, right? Kind of like that. Now what do I do? I have version five now. Let's add some more to it. Let's add some stars really fast, okay? Cause this is gonna be really quick. You ready for this? I'm gonna come at you quick. Ah, as soon as the file saves. Um, I love it by the way, when you're changing colors, all I did was, um, uh, just use the recolor artwork, but I encourage you to peruse all of these. So if I did want to change this to black and white or if I wanted to invert it, maybe I'm going from night to day, maybe I invert those colors right in here. So invert colors, it's going to do the obvious, except for global colors like I just added, but there it inverted it and now it's like an alien landscape. Okay, so let's move on. Let's take a look at this because what I want to do is I'm going to take this moon. I want to move it up a little bit. Let's work on adding some stars really fast, okay? Lock down the other layers. I'm gonna add a rectangle tool. You're saying, hey, Paul, you're gonna make a star with a rectangle? Yeah, yeah, I am, it's super easy, okay? And notice how I can rotate and I can curve these corners, right? We see we can do that right in here. I can curve those corners all day long. Uh, but what I wanna do is I want to, where's the chamfered? Help me out here. Come on, where's the chamfered style? Okay, let's go in here. Shape. All right, give me one second. Let's try this one more time. Uh, I'm looking for a chamfered. Why is it not there? I'm sure it's based on what I have selected or something. Let's try this one. <sighs> What's up, Rosebe? All right. 
Okay. Let's make this a solid color. That's one thing I want to do for sure. Let's kind of break this down a little bit. Come on, buddy. Be my friend. Make you a solid color. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I'm gonna do this a uh, little bit, maybe it's gonna be a little bit, take me a little bit longer, because um, I'm looking for the chamfered style and it'll probably show up later on. But here's the gradient. Changing that to solid. Ah, uh, let's just take this. There we go. Ah, uh, took me long enough. But I'm gonna go ahead and just rotate this. Sorry, everyone. Uh, if you know where the chamfered corners is, uh, let me know. Uh, I don't want to use an effect because I want this as simple as possible, uh, quite frankly, for this, this particular design. Um, and again, let's just kind of make this a quick star. Actually, one easy way to do this, since I want to bow in the sides, I can use the um, anchor point tool with the anchor point tool selected. When I roll over lines, I'm able to grab that line. I get the curvature tool. That's what this is. With that curvature tool, I can bend it in like that, bending in this side, right? Adjusting this. Maybe not exactly, but hey, stars aren't perfect either. Just like that. This is the shape of I'm going forward. It's called chamfered uh, corners, which I was having a hard time getting earlier. There's my star. Let's take this over to uh, brushes. I'll drop this into my brushes panel. We're gonna make a scatter brush, clicking OK. And we wanna change the size to random. It's gonna go from uh, maybe 16% its size to 500. Maybe that's a, that's a little much to 300% its size, from 10 to 300. We're gonna make the spacing random as well. Uh, go from a smaller number to a larger number. Uh, scatter, make that random as well. So I'm just manipulating these numbers, clicking OK. Uh, with the brush, as you see, as I paint, I get all these different stars. So that's what I'm going for. This is typically something you'll have to um, convert pin tool. I'll have to try that convert pin tool. But now that I have all these, uh, this line right here, I can now play with it. Cause right up here, this is the brush, the scatter brush that I just made. So now what I can do is I'll typically go in and I'll click preview. And preview allows me to adjust these settings to get more along the lines of what I want. I want something smaller, that's when I'll play with these settings. So just cause you don't know what these settings are initially, create it, whatever you want, draw that line, and now you get the stars the way you want them and apply it to the strokes, okay? And now what's cool is I hit B for brush, I could paint with that line and we see, we get all those glorious stars. Fantastic. Boy, the one thing that was uh, supposed to be the easiest got a little bit more complex, but we got it squared away. And that's an easy way to sort of like build out a little star field, if you will. Let's bring that over like that. All right, you get the idea. Fantastic. Um, let's see, what time is it? Uh, yeah, all right. So uh, let's move on. Um, pucker and bloat, ooh. Tom brought up a great point using pucker and bloat. What a good idea. Fantastic. Just so you know what we're talking about there, we want to make star. Good job. That's a good one. It still drives me crazy that I don't know what's happening with my corners here. But uh, pucker and bloat, as I take this, I'll rotate it. Effect. Pucker and bloat. Previewing it. Am I losing my mind? And uh, changing it that way. There's your pucker and bloat. Boom, cool. Thank you, I love that. Look at that, that's gorgeous. That's so much prettier than mine. 
Poker and bloat, good idea. Thank you so much. Into it. All right, so here we go. We have this uh, sort of star field that we can adjust. I'm actually gonna take down the opacity. That's something else we could probably talk about is adjusting the opacity for each one of these. Um, but let's uh, change this scene one more time to daytime. So with this saved, I'm gonna do that. All right. Yeah, exactly, Mark. I did double click the corner widget to get the corner options. You're exactly right. Um, I did that and let me do it one more time just to make sure we're on the same page. Double click. The chamfered option is not in here. Show it. Uh... So anyways, hopefully you know what I'm talking about. All right, cool. Let's move on. Taking this, we're going to go on into uh, making this look like a daytime scene. Now that I have this project saved, uh, and I'm missing some of these questions. Can you download these files to play around with? Uh, you know, if you follow me uh, on Instagram or uh, Twitter or message me there, I can, uh, I can send you the file if you're interested. All right, cool. Let's move on. Yeah, our stars are okay. Let's turn this into a daytime scene and see what happens, right? First off, I don't need the moon. The moon will just stay the way it is. It's going to be the sun as well. First thing we need to do is understand how the sky works and what it looks like. And what we will often do is go over here. Let's go to a new window. Uh, and uh, sunrise. Images. Okay, there's a difference be between sunrise and sunset, by the way. Sunrise is going to have more blue and yellow. Sunset's going to be more orange. So this is actually, I kind of doubt that that's even a, a sunrise, to be honest with you. This is the ideal sunrise, like this. We can see how this looks. This is what I'm going for, right? It's right in there. With that in mind, clicking over, adjusting those col colors accordingly, accordingly, using my gradient right in here and you know what I can click directly on the object to change this to white clicking up here changing that to that nice there we have it that nice blue okay same thing for the Sun let's unlock that layer which is gonna be called Sun now this is all pretty straightforward Still working on that particular shape. The sun this time. I can give it also a uh, nice glow of yellow. So that's what I'm working on now. Ah, yes, pucker and bloat is awesome, by the way. It's great for creating diamonds. That's what I'll typically use it for. But you can create some fun like mandala type designs is what you can do with pucker and bloat. Uh, but again, just kind of make this into a daytime scene. It's already looking pretty spectacular, as we can see, because why I used semi-transparency right in here. But again, I can change the appearance, make that lighter, and of course, make sure this nice outer glow right in here can still be white, or is it a tint of yellow? Let's just try this with a tint of yellow. Click OK. Could even be a little stronger. All right, there we go. So that's why I'm going to add a new effect. Hopefully you know that you could do this. You can add as many effects as you want. See how that's really popping a lot? It's because I actually have two effects, one on top of the other. Uh, this second one actually might be a little bit smaller. We'll go like 20 pixels, okay? It's going to be set to white. Click OK. The center is always going to be brighter than the outside. Wait for it. The outside is going to be an actual color like yellow. Let's take a preview of it. And we'll take down this opacity to about 25. All right. Uh, 
Or we could use, uh, yeah, offset path is a good way, another good way to do it too. I like doing these effects because these effects mean that I can change it later on, right? Because notice how they're stacked right over here. If I use offset path, um, obviously that's going to be another path I have to deal with rather than effect, an effect. All right. Wait for it. Hmm. One thing about FEX, even though it means less um, vector pads, it does take a little bit of time to process it as well. Hey, that works for me. I'm going to go with that. That's good enough for now. Uh, I'm probably... Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm probably going to work on this some more. Somebody asked about this. I know it needs some more work. We can see actually other versions that I made. Here's a night version. This one looks pretty good. And then there's a, a number of other ones that I was working on as well. So there's that one. There's this. This one that's kind of reaching more the daytime scene. Uh, and then also the one where it's like midnight. So uh, I like the point of animating this. So could I actually do, could I go from night to day and actually add a parallax effect. Of course you can, right? That would mean using After Effects. Um, uh, okay, Rosebe, good to have you here. And uh, thanks for joining me today. Uh, offset path as an effect, effects path, offset, offset path. Yeah, we can do that exactly right. But that's still gonna mean that's, that's a, another path, so. Yeah, you could do it that way. It's like two different ways. I don't use offset path much. All I wanted was a glow, so that's why I went with outer glow. So hopefully that works for you, Tom. I appreciate you hanging out with me. I'll post this file later, by the way. Um, uh, if you just go ahead and follow me on the social medias and let me know that you're out there. So I'm not doing it just for my own health uh, if you are interested in the file, so. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, yeah, if you have any more questions or anything, uh, get in touch with me. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, that's about it. More coming this week. We've got some exciting things coming up. So as we do always, uh, thank you, Kat. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. And uh, don't forget to call your mom. Thanks, everyone. See ya.